Next thing I want to talk about is uh, end of game strategies, you know, and uh, this is where timeouts become vital and, and what you've done earlier on, uh, you know, sometimes, as I said, you know, if we, <laughs> I remember once and, and, and Sammy Grogan will understand this, we were in Townsville and um, in the first half, we we're going to get two timeouts and, and as a, you know, we don't get any TV timeouts in the NBL anymore. And we're in the th second quarter and it's about six minutes to go and Sam's into me saying, hey, you need to use a timeout. We need a timeout. And I turned to him and said, I've already used them. We're out of timeouts. Uh, so, you know, sometimes, you know, although it's different in, in the NBL, as I said, in fever, you get two and then three. How you use your timeouts is going to be important and, and, you know, having them at the end of games. But some of the end of game strategies, it's one of the most difficult times to know when to call a timeout is at the end of the game. You know, do you, do you use it? You know, remembering that you lose a timeout at the two minute mark. You know, some coaches will call a timeout around about two and a half minutes if they've still got three timeouts so they don't lose one. Um, you know, do you call a timeout? <clears throat> When do you call a timeout in that last two minutes? When do you call a timeout in the, in the fourth quarter? You know, as I said, here in Japan, we get a, a TV timeout at the five minute mark. So sometimes, you know, if it's around that six minute mark, you might hold off unless it's an emergency. You know, and I remember playing Yokohama earlier in the year and we're down by about 12 and uh, about six minute mark. I, I, I'd already used one in the third quarter. I thought, you know what, I don't want to use a timeout. I want to save that, so I've got two left in the last two minutes. I didn't call a timeout and in that minute. The, the lead went from, I think, 12 or 14 out to about 18 or 20 before the TV timeout. You know, and some people questioned me afterwards, why didn't I call the timeout? I said, because I didn't want to waste it. I wanted the two, but hindsight, do you use the timeout and still make sure you have your two for the end of the game? Uh, fortunately, it's interesting though, about three or four games later, the same situation came up and uh, I decided to use the timeout. Um, and this time, in hindsight, it was a great decision. Even though it left me with one, this time I was a genius. The time before, not so much. But, you know, that's the effectiveness of, uh, of hindsight, of course. Okay, so we practice a lot of end of game situations in our practice. We have the time. And sometimes that's so I don't have to call a timeout because I don't want to give the opposition a chance to set up their defence. Plus, I get to save a timeout. So we have some verbal cues on what to run at certain times, and we talk about that a lot. You know, the other thing you've got to decide on, are you up or are you down? Right? Because remember, the team that's trailing late in the game, the clock's their enemy. You know, I don't want sometimes getting the ball in quickly and keeping that, shit, that clock running is important so that the time's ticking away. Okay. When the clock's the enemy, we have a bit of a rule. Right? We don't want to allow uncontested threes. We don't want quick twos. And we certainly don't want to foul to stop the clock. We want teams to try and take 15 plus seconds on each possession. And if we can, we, we often refrain from calling timeouts. Okay, and sometimes not calling a timeout can stop the opposition, particularly if they've used their timeouts from getting organized. And uh, that's why we practice a lot of times with with a minute to go, if we've got a six point lead, I won't necessarily call the timeout. Our players, and particularly my point guards, will know what to run, <clears throat> what players we want to run, who we want to get the ball to, what players will choose some time, make it tough for teams to play the lanes, etc. And we understand that we will take a, a quick two and make it an eight point ball game because we live by the rule that an eight point lead is a four possession game, not a three possession game because as I said before, we're not going to allow an easy three-point shot. Okay, lastly, and I hope you've enjoyed the presentation so far, but just lastly, before I take some questions, some things to think about. Okay, first one, coming out of timeouts, do you change your defence? Um, sometimes I love to go to, we, we have a couple of different zones. We have a, a one, two, two point drop zone. We also use a two, three zone. Sometimes coming out of the timeout, we'll change our defence just because we know they would have probably tried to set up a play, so we want to disrupt that. Secondly, do you use subs instead of wasting a timeout to change the game? You know, sometimes we might use subs to, to change the game rather than just calling a timeout. Do you save your timeouts for the fourth quarter? I know there's some coaches out there who refuse to call timeouts in the third quarter and they'll try and use subbing, etc., because they want to make sure they've got three timeouts in the fourth quarter. 
do you have specific uh, after time out plays that you run? Uh, we have a few, um, particularly if we need a basket at different times. Um, sometimes you might call it to try and get a two for one, but you know, as I said, we practice these things so we don't always uh, call timeouts to do it. But I know some coaches love to have uh, some after time out plays to run. Lastly, if you have two timeouts, if, this is an interesting one and one I've been thinking about. If you still have your two timeouts with, say, six seconds on the clock and the opposition have free throws, uh, let's say you're down by a point, point or two, you know, one of the things I've started to do is uh, I'll call a timeout before the free throws just in case they miss the second one, but also to try and ice the free throw shooter a little bit. And then I'll put another timeout in because obviously if there's only around about six or seven seconds, you might want to advance the ball and uh, to set up a play. And, you know, that's something we've used uh, to good effect this season, actually, um, is, is if having those two timeouts late because, I, as I said, we, I like to try and save them a little bit. We practice what we do so the players fully understand it, the point guards know. And so sometimes we use these situations to save those two point timeouts for a late game situation. Uh, just in case a team purposely misses, which we had a situation where they did that. Unfortunately for us, our guys knew exactly what to do. When we ran down, we actually scored a basket uh, to win on, on the buzzer. And, uh, you know, again, I said, I have the time to practice all these things, but I think sometimes there are some interesting tactics 